I am going to go ahead and chair this meeting. I know it's a little bit unusual um, so to have staff chair the meeting, but it just seemed to be with people inconsistent that I go ahead and, and just prep for it. So we will call the October 10th Beautification and Public Art Commission meeting to order. Roll call, please. Commissioner or Chair Cruz. We know he's going to, not going to be here. Vice Chair Labarsky. Here. Commissioner Garcia. It did look as though he was trying to get on, but he hasn't been able to to break through. I guess. Commissioner. Yes, he I I heard from um, Commissioner Garcia, and he's in a remote location. He may go in and out of you know internet access, so he may come on later. Commissioner Johnson. I'm here. Commissioner McGrath. Here. Commissioner Barrow. Here. And Commissioner Zecker. Here. Thank you. All right. Our next agenda item is upcoming events. Always look at Flagstaff 365 for upcoming events in music, culture, arts, and sciences. Um, I often draw from it for those weekly reports um, at the bottom of uh, events that are funded by our BBB taxes through Creative Flagstaff. Um, so I look at it regularly. I urge you to do so as well. Are there any other commissioners who have some upcoming events that they would like to highlight for us? I am hearing none and I am seeing no hands raised. So I'm going to go on to public participation. Um, other than presenters um, for the beautification and action grants, do we have any other members of the public present who um, have filed a, a public comment card? Don't have filed with me, Chair. OK, thank you, um, Mr. Zaneko. And I have received none as well. OK, the next item is the approval of the September minutes. Um, this is addressed only to the commissioners. Commissioners, have you had a chance to review the September minutes? Yes. Yes, I have. OK, yes, we have we have one uh, punctuation correction from um, Chair Cruz. And it is sitting on my office desk. I cannot tell you exactly what it is, but it is simply a punctuation correction. Um, can I, is there a motion to um, accept the minutes with that punctuation correction? So moved. I hear a motion from Commissioner Verrill. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further comment? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any nays? Are there any abstentions? Thank you, it has passed. All right, so the next item is the announcements. I have one announcement. I went to um, the October 5th Art X festival planning meeting um, and presenting there was the Arizona Commission on the Arts Executive Director Anne LeCure and she was a guest and she led a discussion on the festival's alignment with the commission's visions for the arts in the state. I also met um, uh, Director Anne LeCure at the um, American for the Arts Conference back in DC and I think that this is also um, a relationship that I think we would like to cultivate and perhaps invite her to a future commission meeting. One of the things that's very exciting, I'm sure all of you read the news about um, Flagstaff garnering um, a substantial portion of the infrastructure uh, money that was passed in the three uh, bills and that um, transportation 
had uh, Buttigieg uh, maybe visiting the state to celebrate that and uh, coming up to Flagstaff perhaps to break ground on the DCC um, project. So, but the very exciting part of that is that finally the feds have decided that as part of those infrastructure projects to take the well-honed public art process that we started implementing and putting artists officially on design teams and allowing federal money to be uh, spent on art. And so this is very exciting. And I think with that number of federal infrastructure projects possibly coming to the region, um, we should probably um, get ahead. And I'm thinking of trying to invite um, Ms. LaCour um, you know, to a, a future meeting when her schedule allows. So anyway, I, I was very excited about all that. I know she was there for another reason, but it had so much to do with us, what she had to say that I I wanted to share it with you. Um, the second announcement that I have is um, that we had the interviews for the project administrator uh, meeting. Uh, Chair Cruz was one of the selection panelists. Uh, I have made a recommendation to HR, and that is where we are at. So um, I'm, you know, we'll see what happens next. <laughs> so now, do any of the commissioners have any announcements? I'm not seeing any hands. I'm going to check the chat. And uh, okay, I'm not seeing anybody else having any announcements. Um, so we are going to go ahead and go to the beautification and action grants, um, the presentations from the applicants, and they will each have seven minute presentations, and then the commission will have about eight minutes to ask questions. I'm going to turn this over to run this uh, to our former program manager, Eliza Kressman, who's still on contract and who was so intimately involved with these beautification and action grants. Um, we will not, uh, the commission will discuss the um, presentations later in, later in the meeting, not immediately after the presentations. Eliza? Yeah, hi, good evening, everyone. It's nice to see your faces either in the conference room or, um, digitally here. Uh, I wanted to just check before we dive in, I wanted to give a little bit of background on these grants in particular for our new commissioners. So really I'm speaking more to the commissioners right now than our applicants, but I also wanted to see if um, Robert or anyone from Terra Birds is here yet to, um, to just see if they're ready to present because they are first group tonight. And so I just wanted to check in on who all is in the room, and then I will uh, give a, some brief background to the commissioners about these grants. So I know that there's some folks that came in. Please feel free to, to speak up if you would like. I, I believe all four grant application people are groups are here. Yeah. Oh, great. OK, so we have Flag High School, and we've got um, Terra Birds rep. I'm You're the yeah, secretary. To, yeah, I'm actually the treasurer, but I'm not here to present. Oh, you're not here to present. Not oh, requested to do that. I'm that here to support okay. Okay. To Cheryl's. My apologies. I talked to <laughs> no. I was just checking with her to see if she knew where they were at. Eliza, do you know that they're aware that, of the presentation today? Because I talked to Andrea earlier, and I think I mentioned I was coming. So they did ask for a time and I confirmed that time with them and it was. Um, I believe it's Robert who I've been communicating with on that application okay. and I'm not sure if he's the artist or from Terra Birds. But I, I think yeah. I think he's both and, and so I apologize, but I wasn't in that loop, so I oh, can't. That's okay. it's no problem. And what we'll do is just hope that they get here by 420 when they begin. And if not, then we may reshuffle. So we'll take that as we need to. But before we get started on that, I wanted to just mention um, in particular to uh, Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Verrill that um, the Beautification in Action grants have been around at the city for um, 
about a decade, maybe even a little longer. Uh, so they've been around for quite some time. For many years, we just had rolling submissions and we were realizing we weren't getting as much community participation. And so now we have two deadlines every year, spring and the fall. Um, we have increased the grants. They used to be um, 2,500. And in recent years, we made them 4,500 and also allowed for things like payment of artist fees or payment of uh, landscapers, things like that, so that we can pay people for the work that they're doing. In particular, recognizing that we want to pay artists when they are creating things in our community. And uh, to also give a little bit of context, uh, we have about $40,000 annually for these grants. And we have four applicants that made it to the stage for these fall applications. And so even if you fund all of these, I just want to highlight that you will have over half of that budget left for uh, the spring applications in our fiscal year. So even if you fund all of these, it will be about 17,000 of the 40,000. And so given the history and the context, um, our intent is that you focus on the vi viability of these projects, not competitive, uh, competitiveness between the applicants. Some of the other things that we fund like the Creative Flagstaff Community Grants, there can be more of that competitive factor. And so I wanted to just highlight that for the commissioners before we, um, jump into presentations from the community and see if you have any questions before we get going on the beautification and action grants about the process, um, you know, and then specifically for the commissioners, if you uh, just have anything you wanna add, if you've been here for a while about these grants or if you have any questions about them as well. Eliza, how does the 40,000 compare to other aspects of arts grants funding that aren't beautification in action? So um, in terms of other grant making activities, we have two other things that our program funds through the bed board and beverage tax here in Flagstaff. So for those that aren't familiar with the BBB tax, those are when you go to a restaurant or a hotel, you stay in a campground, you get takeout or go to a bar, a slice of that tourism tax goes to our programming and beautification arts and sciences. So to answer your question, Commissioner, um, we have uh, flow through money through Creative Flagstaff that goes to about 40 to 50 nonprofits here in Flagstaff annually, and that's about 400,000. It used to be about 360. It was just raised in the recent budget, budget process to 400,000 annually. And the 400,000 in grants can go for things like specific projects. Um, it can go for general operating support for nonprofits. Um, and so that is a larger chunk of money that goes, that is dispersed quite widely throughout the community and has a different intent. The beautification in action grants, we have a max of 40,000. I'd say we, um, we are trying to get more and more applicants um, to apply because we, we tend to have, um, lately we've been getting close to spending that out, but not it's not to the point where it's a super competitive process. And um, that was just increased from about, I don't know, it was like 18,000 annually until recent years. And when we bumped up the amount allowed, we bumped up the total in the hopes that we can get more of that out into the community. And so the beautification and action grants are for actual um, projects that are created in the community unlike the creative flag staff grants, which are for general operating support specific projects. Does that answer your question, Commissioner? Partially, I guess my, my question more specifically is of that 40, do we have to spend it all or is there a chance we could spend more? You do not have to spend it all. And in fact, we often don't, but that money doesn't go away. It gets folded back into our programs. Um, if you wanted to spend more, that's tricky. We'd have to figure out where to draw it from. It's not impossible. And probably Jana can answer that question better than me in the role that she's in now in terms of the flexibility to um, expand the program. It hasn't come up yet, although we're trying to get more and more. And I have to say the applications have been getting, um, we've been getting more and more. We get four or five um, every uh, cycle, whereas we used to get just a few every year. Um, but if you wanted to spend more, I think we would just, that would be a conversation and, you know, say you get 
six wonderful applications in the spring and it's slightly over what we have and you want to fund them all, I think that would be a conversation to have with staff at that time to see if there's another line item to draw it from. What makes it tricky is that this particular expense is in our um, core operating budget. So it's one where when we've increased the amount, it's a much more involved uh, uh, process than what, with our capital projects. So just that's probably more than you want to know, but as a commissioner, just so you know some of those nuances of this funding. Thanks. Okay, anyone else? I note that it's 416. Um, obviously, um, Mr. Chambers has until 420 uh, to come. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get off and see if I can find a phone number which to call and see if they intend to be here. Okay, and while you're doing that, I'll double check my email to see if they've emailed. And if not, let's, I suggest that we shuffle a little bit since we have people in the room that are waiting, um, if that's okay with the applicants. But let's see if we can um, find out what's happening. Yes. I'm gonna check my email. Okay, so I haven't received anything from Robert. I did email him a few times over the weekend as well um, because I, yeah, there was a little bit of mix up about the time. So I'm wondering if he might be confused. So if Jana can't reach him, um, Sarah from Chocolita, since you're at the final slot, would you rather go earlier or would you rather stick to your original time? And I'll check also if this is okay with Jana when she's back. I'll, I'll go earlier if that's fine with you guys. That's I'm flexible. <laughs> yeah. I'll get all this nervous energy out of my body as quick as possible. Why not? <laughs> oh, yeah. Help yourselves. So I'm thinking unless she can reach him, let's go that route. We'll see when Jana gets back. And then if he shows up later, we can give him your slot, time slot, Sarah. So that All right. Where to go? I don't even need any of my backups. First of all, that that approach is perfectly fine with me. Okay, I I'm, I'm glad you heard that, Jana. Okay, we'll yes, plan I on did. that. Thank you, Sarah, for your flexibility, and I'll go ahead and and uh, turn off my camera and. Thanks for your patience all. This is our first time doing this hybrid. And so we are learning as we go as well. All right, just, just do it anytime. And then um, do you want me just to like cue you? Like, hey, next slide. That'll work. Cool, okay, great. Um, so the my first slide is just kind of introducing that it is a mural project over at Steve's Boulevard, 2710 North Steve's. I'm in number 22. Um, we're in Kachina Square Plaza, right off of 66 in Steve's. Um, we'll go ahead and go to the second one. Um, that's me. This is my chocolate. These are my chocolate bars that I make. So um, what we do that's a little different is we combine herbalism and chocolate together, kind of the history of my company, who I am. Um, I feel like that's kind of a little bit important to give you guys background. I started studying herbalism long time ago. I studied chocolate as well in 2005. One day I combined the two together uh, around a bar for women during their cycle to make it more um, easy to get through like cramping, anxiety, this kind of thing. It worked for me. I shared it with my friends. It worked for them. They liked it. And then people started coming back. And then I realized, oh my God, I have a business. Um, so that was, that was a long time ago. That was in like 2007. I've been slow building since then. Um, and now I'm here in Flagstaff and I have two lovely assistants. 
Um, I moved up from Sedona. I was in Sedona that whole time for a very long time. I moved a few years back and I moved my business up here, thank God, um, <laughs> this year. It took a little while, building out took a little while and we just opened a retail space at the end of March. So that was one thing that I wanted to do was have mixed retail and manufacturing. And I wanted to move my manufacturing from a co-packer in California back to my home state and close to me because the cost of everything got very expensive um, to ship. So it just kind of did not make sense to do shipping anymore. It made sense to like bring everything home. Um, so that's why I'm located where I am because Steve's provided the right type of, you know, combination of there's the opportunity for retail, but also we can do manufacturing out of there. It is East Flag, so it is kind of hard to get people um, knowing that we're there or that like, hey, this is a cool retail chocolate shop that you want to come to. And there's a giant wall outside that everyone says you should put a mural on that. Um, so go ahead to slide three. There's our giant wall. Uh, there's a giant wall. We're like tucked in the corner there next to the vape shop. That's Heather who works for me. She actually owns Potion Tea Shop, which is on the uh, south side by the climbing gym. Uh, that is the wall. It's pretty big. Um, you'll notice that in part of my budget, I wanted to uh, have a, some scaffolding because the artist requested that. And I think that's going to be safe given the height of this person and the height of that wall. Um, so yeah, we're also the plaza. I don't know if I'm like going to repeat things you already know, so forgive me, but the plaza, Kachina Square Plaza is owned by Hopi Tribe and Hopi Economic Development Corporation. So I wanted to work with someone. I mean, I wanted to make it more beautiful outside of where I am, you know, like pink elephant in the room because it's going to help my business. You know, the other thing is that it's going to make this place a little more beautiful. That plaza is that color and there's a lot of buildings. There's a lot of different business locations that are empty, you know, since COVID. And I've been like on the phone trying to get my business friends to be like, hey, rent space over here. It's really, it's really nice. It's kind of turning around in a way like businesses are coming in. There's this younger um, younger barbers that moved in the other, you know, down the way a little bit. So I'm wanting to put something there uh, that gives back to the community that I'm supporting, you know, the Hopi tribe and work with the Hopi artists. So go ahead and flip to the next slide. Um, so I reached out because I, I followed Dwayne Coyoena on Instagram. I love his artwork so much. And I reached out to him and said, hey, would you be interested in taking on this project? Especially because of um, what he did. This is his mural at Next Step Prosthetics that he just completed. Um, he was really into it. And my landlords were uh, very into the idea of doing something that builds uh, community. Thank you. Um, so go ahead and switch to the next slide. So there's a little bit of background about Dwayne. Um, what I really liked about him, which I didn't know at first, was that he um, he has a past in like alcohol addiction. Now he's a motivational speaker. How I got turned on to this project was um, the timing was just right. My cousin was actually murdered a month ago in Philadelphia. He has been like on and off of drugs for a very long time. Um, and so it was a really like rough time. I walked up to my business like the morning of his funeral and there was a guy on the front stoop that like really wasn't doing well and it like hit me really hard and it hurt and um someone walked in later that day and said hey have you thought of putting a mural on this space like it would make this place really beautiful and that just felt really um like serendipity you know i was like i should i should reach out to i should make it happen even though the prey was like the presentation or the submission process was like a week later. I really um, crunched to make it happen. So um, it just kind of felt like Dwayne was even more perfect of a person to do this project. 
Um, so go ahead and budget. So this is my budget. Um, I know these things are kind of boring, but mostly like I'm I'm willing to cover the other um, what the rest of the artist fees are. You know, payments from other sources is 1750. Some of the businesses in that area have been talking about, hey, let's get together and do this block party for a while. And so I thought that'd be a really great way to like fundraise the rest of the money for Dwayne is throw a block party and have like Square Root Foods and the barber people and the new lady that does like the thread thing and the people from the other thread up, they're all interested. So um, yeah, otherwise pretty cut and dry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, I have a I have a question um, to Jana. What what is the um, what are the restrictions on using city money on a privately owned building? Um, this is for Eliza. Yes, Vice Chair Labarsky, um, it is fine to use it on a, a, a private owned building. Indeed, most of our BIA grants are on uh, privately owned buildings. It just has to be publicly visible. And are there any restrictions like it has to remain um, on the building for a certain amount of time? Or anything like that? No. Hmm. I don't believe so, but I'm going to, uh, Eliza and I are both trying to, sorry, um, get a hold of a, uh, of Terra Birds, um, and we're having some success, so I, I apologize. But um, it obviously, you know, it is a private building in that sense. Um, we haven't had an issue in the past um you know other than deterioration over you know time um but obviously any private landlord can make a change i mean that's you know that is an inherent risk um but it's been an inherent risk for many of our murals right i just i just wanted to get that clarified once again that it's it's fine to do that on a private building but i i am concerned that there aren't any um uh, there's no commitment from the owners for how long the, the mural will stay up. Um, but that's a, something for us to consider at some point, I guess. And, and I was told under, under a similar circumstance that there, there was a reasonable expectation that it would stay up for 15 years. Oh, okay. Huh. I'm leased in for five. I'm no I, there, there's nothing in the beautification and action grants about 15 years. Maybe um, there's different um, types of projects that, of course, we fund that have different expectations. Yeah, Jen, I'm sorry. I don't know if you can see my hand is raised. This is Eliza. I just wanted to clarify that that is an expectation often with our uh, our other projects that we do is like a capital project with through the city. There are different expectations. And as Jana mentioned, uh, we've never had something in our beautification and action grants about this, and it's actually never uh, been a problem in the decade-ish of time that we've done it. Not saying it wouldn't be, but I just do want to uh, reiterate the, the history that Jana mentioned. Great. Good to know. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson has her hand up as well. Chair. Uh, yes, I do. I just wanted to ask. So, um, Sarah, you mentioned that you have a lease for five years. Is that right? Yeah, they actually, they wouldn't let me lease longer. Five was okay. their max. No, uh, I just wasn't able to. Okay. Um, are the owners of the building aware of your plan of this and are they okay and like on board with the your plan? Yeah, absolutely. I um that was the first thing I did was reach out to them and get approval. So I reached out to them, got approval for doing the mural project, and then I sent um the mural that you saw 
as because that's his touch point of what he's going to do a similar design um, for this wall, you know, if everything goes through. Um, and they approved that actual mural itself. So not only did they say yes, they also approved the artwork. Okay, they awesome. the artwork. Thank you. They approved the artwork. I didn't see that in there. Um, so I saw samples of what the artist had done. But. Yeah, he didn't draw up like what's going to go on the wall, but he said this is what's it will look like this. Different designs, but similar concept. I mean. So just to be clear, yes, um, I believe in the packet, um, was there not already a um, permission from the building owner submitted? Yeah. Yes, so that should be in your packet for you to review commissioners. Oh, I see, thanks, Jana. I didn't wanna, put an artist on the spot because like I said I I put that application together in like a week and I didn't want to turn around and be like hi Dwayne do something in a week for me um <laughs> you know what I mean I thought that would be like starting off on the wrong foot um but he said yeah you know he just did this one in under a week is how long it took him to put this mural up and he said you know I can do something very similar to this we just had agreed to do colors that match my colors of my furniture out front only because I didn't want my furniture clashing with the artwork. That's it. So, yes, we um, commissioners have approved exact designs um, before. They've also approved um, just a process to select artists before. They've also approved um, murals with just um, you know, previous projects by artists. So all three of forms have come through the commission in previous BIA grants. That's good. <laughs> I'm, I'm new to this process, but it seems, so you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and while the samples of what the artists have shown us are beautiful, it seems odd to, to approve it without like a, at least a sketch of what we're looking at. Um, well, let's discuss that further and, you know, when we're actually, um, if you don't have a question for, um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the time for questions and then we deliberate later. Here's my question. How excellent is the chocolate? It's right there. <laughs> Have some. It's giving you a softball. I was like, is this <laughs> is this considered a bribe if I bring chocolate? <laughs> it's just a perk for having shown up. I'm sorry you guys can't make it, but maybe they'll save you some. <laughs> and I see Commissioner Zecker has her hand up as well. Yeah, I don't have a question. I just wanted to um, share a comment with Sarah that um, I really appreciate, I know you did this very quickly, and I, but I appreciate the fact that you, um, you know, have contacted Dwayne as, as a Hopi member of the community to be a part of this, this artwork as well. And you mentioned that the building was owned by, um, I, I'm going to get it wrong, so I won't, I won't attempt to say who it is, but I just, I just appreciate the, um, you know, the effort that you made in that connection so quickly. So just wanted to say that to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of important. You know, it's it is a space where the Hopi bus picks up and drops off there. Um, it's a space for Hopi in town. You know, as much as it doesn't look like that on the outside, it actually is. Okay, there's one minute left um, in this presentation slot. Um, you are welcome to stay if you wish, but you are not required to stay. This is an open meeting, um, and uh, but we won't be doing the deliberations until later in the meeting. Thank you very much for coming. Hi, I appreciate you're it. You're welcome. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Sarah. And I think it's now time for 
Cheryl. And um, thank you for the invitation to present. So we're looking at um, a Kill of Community Greenhouse Beautification Project. And you can go ahead and go to the next slide. So if you're not familiar with it, Kill of does have a new school. And with that comes new school grounds. Um, we're back in the community after a year across town after flooding. Um, so it's really important for us to get the community involved and this beautification project will help us with that. And these are just some words that come to mind when we think of Killip community, beauty, education, sustainability, diversity, and really resilience. <laughs> so funds from this project are requested to beautify the new greenhouse space with a pollinator garden and implement a three bin compost system to promote sustainability and land stewardship for the Killip community. We'll, we're also looking at a future mural um, on a storage bin. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in there. Next slide. So for our pollinator garden, we're wanting to do it around a new greenhouse. So the first picture you see here is the location where the greenhouse will go. Right now it's just wood chips and you can see um, a car there, that's 3rd Street. Um, there is some landscaping rock off to the right there. We're hoping to put pollinator plants around the greenhouse and then into that area so it's very visible from 3rd Street and also um, from our fields that should be going in in the spring. And then the second picture you'll see um, a photo from the Yavapai Community College. That is the greenhouse that they currently have, and it is the um, same type and model that we are looking at getting, which will be large enough to hold classes of students and community um, classes in there. And so then the last picture there is just an example from the Cheyenne Children's uh, Botanical Garden of how you can beautify the area all around there with pollinating plants. And then also um, helping out those pollinators, the butterflies and bees that are disappearing. And then this is a sample of what we're looking at for the three band compost system. This one is a picture of the one that's at uh, the Benito Street Community Garden. And the three bins um, help so that we can have constant compost going. Also, it's much better looking <laughs> than just having the open areas that we used to have in our old garden and helps so that we don't have a rodent issue that we had before and allows the community um, to come and drop off their food scraps and we can also use some from our cafeteria. Um, the three bin system also will provide a space at Killip for students to be engaged in with waste reduction and soil uh, regeneration on the campus. And the next one. So this one it has changed a little bit since we put in our application. In the middle, you can see a very unbeautiful, I don't know, it's not very beautiful. The, the red conix box, we also call them bleaker boxes because of um, the company here in town. It's a storage container that Killip does own. Um, so we were looking at putting it by the greenhouse and painting it a uh, base coat then to do a future mural on. So we might be coming back to the beautification commission for that. Um, because of the location, um, and what else is there? The construction company wasn't able to place it there. So they'll actually be placing it in 
a great location. It will be by, if you look in the first picture, those are our first group of junior wildlife gardeners or junior master gardeners, the first ones to be certified, and the butterfly garden um, that they helped create in our after school program. So the, the storage box will be off to the right of that area and very visible from 6th Avenue and from our fields. And we're looking at um, painting murals of plants and butterflies later. We Most of our population is Native American or Hispanic and butterflies are symbolists um, for bo both of those cultures. And um, but luckily we have the base coat already covered by core construction. So that's something now that we're not asking from the Beautification Commission. Next slide. So here is our budget pollinator plants for $2,000. And we have a partnership with um, Gil Gradop mm -hmm. from the um, University of Arizona Extension Office. And she will be our source uh, to make sure that we have native plants. And then labor there, part of that will be to Gail and some of that to the terror birds. They've been working with our students um, to, on that stewardship project. And then um, she's known as Fritz, will be helping us out with the three bin compost system. Okay. So 800 for materials, 400 for the labor. And the last one. Next two. These are our partnerships. Fritz is there because she doesn't have her own logo. And the very last page to a big partnership here is um, the Green School Yards Flagstaff that I'm a part of, and Philip is the partner or the pilot school for. And so this would help us um, reach that vision that we're looking at. And do I have any time left? 20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> I think I'll wait for questions then. But we, one of our partners is the City of Flagstaff Sustainability Office. And Summer White, apologize, she was not able to be here tonight. But from Green School Yards, I do have Liz Taylor with me here as well to help answer questions. Thank you. As always. <laughs> uh oh, we can't hear. I think you're muted, gonna, Jenna. I know. I was just going to add, though, that I met uh, uh, Ms. Wells uh, at our joint sustainability workshop um, with uh, a, back on September 1st. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So I'm very excited that you applied. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Half your budgets for pollinator plants. Talk to us about those. So I was checking in with them and most of the pollinator plants themselves cost eight to ten dollars for per plant. So to plant in a large area will cost quite a bit. And we're looking at using perennials, those plants that will come back so that we're not using annuals that only come up for one year. So trying to make it a project where you know, you will see those plants again and again and again and to to beautify that area. Can I add to that? Yes. Yeah, and just to add to that, Gail Greytop, who is probably our most skilled grower in town. She's worked at the Arboretum. She's now working for Coconino Con yeah, um, Extension, and she's part of um, part of Terra Birds through her role in Coconino Extension. She will be growing these plants if and she grows these plants and we can decide to purchase plants from her as well as other growers of native species in town. So the intention on the Killip grounds is to make this a, a native and therefore more sustainable um, pollinator garden so that these plants will be healthy, native and persist over time for the school and children will be learning about that as what, well as the community. Exactly what kind of native plants? And as I ask that question, keep in mind, I'm not gonna understand the answer. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are appropriate for pollinators. So they'll be the ones that, that, that the beauty of working with extension is that 
we will be the the pollinator list. If Gail were here, she could just lit, run it, you know, just go like that for you. Should say, for example, we'd have this plant for the bees and would have a suite of these. You probably have heard about the Monarch Project, which is a city uh, supported project. And Gail, uh, Cheryl didn't go into this, but the garden that they planted on the other side of the school was done with a Monarch group. So all the species in there are native specifically there to support the butterfly populations that come through Flagstaff that are declining in their numbers and that are very threatened and could go extinct in this area. And that would, is going to be the same uh, thought process that determines the, the selection of the plants around the greenhouse. Right. For the other area, we worked with um, milkweeds for monarchs. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. But some of the plants we were looking at were like bee balm and rabbit bush, maybe yarrow, but the list goes on and on and right. on. So for example, I can't think of the name of the plant I grow in my garden, but I have one that's specific to hawk moths, who are just gorgeous creatures, come at night, they're actual moths, they look like little hummingbirds, and if you plant that plant, they will come to your yard because that is what attracts them. There's a very tight biological relationship called coevolution that occurs between pollinators and the plants that they use. There's some other questions. Up there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think uh, Vice Chair Labarsky was first, and then Commissioner Zecker. Thanks. I just want to say I love this project, and I I really love the way you're extending it right with the greenhouse, so that. The greenhouse is beautifully landscaped and also in, in a meaningful way. Um, so thank you. I, I do have a question and that's about, unfortunately, it's about irrigation. <laughs> um, even with native plants now with the with the you know drought that we're experiencing, I'm wondering what um, what kind of setup you're going to have for irrigating these plants and I don't see that as a budget item or did I miss that? That is not a budget item. We have talked to um, CORE about that. They are a construction company, and there is an area in the back where we could possibly um, extend irrigation, but we do have water in that area. Yeah. The, the, the short answer, Sandra, is that yeah. the grounds are already set up for irrigation, and that is part of what's happening is with a, a construction process. That hasn't finished on the grounds yet. Um, the, the city is still working on the retention basins that will evolve into the playing fields. And so they're still in process and parts, other parts of the schoolyard, this area included is still uh, part of the actual construction process. Does it, does it make sense though to, um to do some drip irrigation to have that be oh, part of the project? Abs absolutely, oh, yeah. that we wouldn't be proposing this without already knowing that that was in place. Oh, so they're going to put in a drip system? Yes. Then. Oh, OK. Well, and that's if they, yeah, and also if they don't have the money for that, we will do it. We wouldn't plant these plants without that. Yeah, OK, great, thanks. Yeah. We have some, we have the good thing about the collaboration we're doing is that we have a broad collaboration ac across the team for Green Schoolyard and different groups are doing different projects and bringing different money and different skills to what's happening at Killip. But that was way too more, much to talk about in this presentation. Yeah. Happy to share it, but, but it, there's a lot going on. Great to hear. Thank you all. Commissioner Zecker. I actually was curious about the irrigation as well. So thank you, Vice Chair Lebarski, for asking that. I, I have another question that's actually just more for my own educational purposes. So is there, I, I don't know, I guess I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to display my ignorance. Is there any concern with having these pollinators that are attracting bees onto a school property? Do you have 
security? Well, I mean, is there a security, but is there there's a security <laughs> in place for people with EpiPens? How does that work? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, usually we tell the kids if they leave the bees alone, they'll leave them alone. Um, yeah, we've had problems with bees in the past, but they were up in the trees and I don't think we had pollinators out at that time. So the pollinators might actually help. I don't know, you can help me, you know, to keep them well, away from the children. <laughs> well, let me just say <laughs> that, that the bees that, that are being attracted, that are native bees, are all over our community already. They don't, they are not, they are social insects, but they don't form these huge hives like honeybees. And it, that's the, and we're not, the Killip is not proposing to have hives of honeybees no. on the grounds. Although I would note that other schools have been able to do this successfully, but that is not part of the plan. Most of these bees are solitary bees or they, and, and they, they live. They can live in the ground. They can live in other areas. And if you train children to act appropriately around bees, they usually do not get stung. So I I don't think that those of us who have landscaped our yards with with pollinator you know pollinator friendly plants probably have any tales to tell about getting stung by bees unless we've done something stupid like grabbed a flower that a bee was in that we didn't did we didn't notice. So I think this is a pretty pretty safe situation. Personally. Did that help? Yeah, I figured that you had already thought of that. That was the case. I just Yeah. Yeah. Just but thank you for thinking of our kids. <laughs> yeah. That was a good question, Tina. I like that. <laughs> Well, if, you know, any child who is highly allergic to bees has been usually identified by the time they come to school, and the school has special procedures for making sure that they're safe. That would be a yeah. safe thing we to say. We have EpiPens. Yeah. Yeah. Safe. Okay, I think that concludes um, our time for this item, um, unless there's any quick questions. Okay, thank you so much, thank Cheryl. <laughs> it's a and it's an exciting project. And again, you know, you're welcome to stay. It is a, a a public meeting, but again, the deliberations won't be until later in the meeting. So if you want to excuse yourself, you are also welcome to. <laughs> thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Liza? Yeah, next up we have Flag High, which I'm guessing are the presenters that I can barely see on the screen here. Uh, thank you for being here. As with everyone else, you have uh, seven minutes to present and about seven to eight minutes of commission questions. And um, we'll go ahead and hand it off to you. And thanks again for being here. Thank you. Um, so my name is Daryl Marks, and I am the academic advisor for Native American students up at Flagstaff High School. My principal, Libby Miller, who is also listed up there, uh, wasn't able to join us today because she's taking care of the parent-teacher conferences. But she trusted me to be able to speak highly, speak of this presentation uh, the best that we can. I'll put you right on the screen. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. That's easier. Sorry for whatever. So what we're proposing here at Flagstaff High School is, um, if you're not aware, Flagstaff High School is celebrating their centennial, 100 years of being in operation here in Flagstaff within the Unified School District. And when there was mention of this opportunity to reach out for a grant, what we wanted to do was create a timeline that goes from the steps of the old high school, which is just right out in front of Flagstaff High School, and it would lead us around to the front door of the current high school that we have right now. And along that timeline would give an opportunity uh, to share community contributions, but also just highlights that we've recognized at Flagstaff High School. 
And the hope is that we can be painting um, along the sidewalk. And as we're reaching out to the community right now to bring in contributions of, of what those historical events might be and in which families we want to make sure that we're recognizing and highlighting along the way, um, we thought of how much um, of an importance it could be for our families to be able to walk along that sidewalk to our front doors to see where we've come from and then where we're going. And the hope is that this will sit on the sidewalk long after the centennial has um, concluded and we're working ourselves into our future 100 years. And so we've been in conversation with our graphics design teacher as well as our art teacher and they're organizing students right now to help create that vision. So we don't have any visuals to show with you yet because we want this to be student led and driven. We want the students to feel that they're the ones making their mark in history, literally, as we do this work. And so we have a few ideas of what we want to see in that space so we can help maybe encourage that opportunity with students to bring forth their own vision and as long as we're working um, in alignment with the centennial and acknowledging the 100 years, which is a lot of history and a lot that we can share um, with the contributions that are coming from our community, but also just being able to highlight some of the, the fantastic stories that we've been hearing as Flagstaff High School has been celebrating and working towards celebrating even further the centennial from the different families that have come through Flagstaff High School and what um, events might have taken place throughout Flagstaff High School's history that were just stuff that we can celebrate. And as one of the things that we've talked about is that we would want to come back again and ask to create um, an additional set of imagery that would lead our students out of the high school and back out into the community. I know that our athletic director is really excited about the space. Uh, having been a longtime uh, resident of Flagstaff has even encouraged us to think of Stick Greens as a street and the school that used to sit just across the street from us here at City Hall uh, and have those be footsteps or footprints that lead up to the high school. Uh, Flagstaff High School is the the longest running school here in the district, if I understand correctly, that's still in operation. And the steps, if any of you are familiar, if you were to come out on this street right here behind the library and go straight up to Flagstaff High School, the steps that are right there um, at that juncture, that's the steps that led up to the, to the old high school that was there. And so um, it is now a parking lot, but to be able to bridge this connection between the past and where we're at is something that we hope to be able to do so that our children, our students, and their community, right, gets to see where we've been and where we're going. Is there anything I should add to that? Two minutes. Um, I'm Sarah Dector. I'm the conference of planning manager at the city. And our, we also run the Heritage Preservation Program too, and so our program, Daryl and I went and had coffee with Rose Toey, and we, we developed this idea to bring back to the school. And so the Heritage Preservation Program plans to support this effort by bringing historians into the committee environment and letting them help the students develop decade by decade each portion of the timeline. So like the timeline would go down and then the timeline over the course of the year would be created by the students through their own research and their building of relationships with local historians. Um, and so, and there's already two or three who just said they're very excited and want to sign up to do this. And we started a conversation with the board of the Pioneer Museum. So it's really an opportunity at um, participatory art in a way that is also youth led, which I think is really exciting. Um, but it, and that's what that's really what what the city staff as a partner would be contributing to the effort. And we led a timeline exercise when we did the Southside neighborhood plan. I think we put that in the packet 
and showed kind of what it looks like when you do it on paper, but we know how to facilitate this conversation um, based on that past effort. And that's another piece we would support if PAC was willing to help fund the materials to actually um, to actually carry out the timeline. And we've also worked with traffic, which gives my last 10 seconds maybe, on what it looks like in terms of materials. And we've gone through the Bloomberg sidewalk art um, guidelines with the traffic staff and, and talked about safety and, and traffic management and other things around the site as well. Do we wait for the time to conclude or do we jump right in the question? Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> Are there questions? Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Um, yeah, I have a question. I uh, might have missed this, but I'm looking at your budget right now and I see there's uh, 300 allocated for flowers. Um, can you elaborate on that? So one of the things that we're hoping to be able to pull into this sidewalk art, this timeline, is the concept, and, and maybe we're drawing a little bit from indigeneity, we're also drawing from our uh, Hispanic community's celebration around flowers, um, to be able to bring some of these flowers into the space, uh, because we're talking about growth, and we're talking about these opportunities that our young people have to be able to plant seeds in their life, and if they're planting intentionally along this timeline, they get to come back and see that. And our hope is that these flowers outlast what we paint on the sidewalk, right? That this is something that the community can come back and see. Um, it's probably going to be a lot more visually appealing once the, the flowers are planted and they start to bloom for people traveling past the school, right? Because the sidewalk art is something you kind of have to stop put your phone down and look and see that there's a ground beneath you where you're walking and get to see where all these contributions are going. And so the hope is that with this, with planting intentionally flowers along the route that we're, we're giving more opportunities for pause and to see how we can share these conversations even further. I know that we have talked about um, how some of these flowers might be used in some of these celebrations that we have, just like for today's Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, we had a young lady that was presenting about her understanding of indigeneity as a Spanish-speaking community member, right? And there is uh, an event that happens uh, towards the end of October, early part of November, Day of the Spencers, or the Day of the Dead, that utilizes like marital in that practice. And so we've had an altar at the school for the last four years, four years I think. We've had an altar at the school and we've had to bring marigolds in from other communities, whether that's people running down to Phoenix and picking them up, or we've even had somebody who helped us establish an altar, bring flowers in from Seattle so that we could have those. So rather than asking for all of these outside communities to continue to contribute to us, if there's an opportunity for us to grow that so that our students have access to it, then that's something that, again, we have an opportunity to learn, we get to see how that fits into our school and that learning environment of community and, and history. Commissioner Zecker. I also have a, a budget question to elaborate on the, and I don't know if it's the $2,000 stipend for the high school staff. Is that one person? Is that multiple people? And I guess, Jana, is, are there any rules regarding us being able to pay that? Oh, I'm going to answer the rule uh, question first. Up to 50% of the budget can be used for artist fees or staff fees. And I think I heard part of the question, sorry, the volume was really low, but we do have, um, we're hoping to have our art teacher and our graphic design teacher be compensated for some of the work that they're going to be doing outside of class and outside of the regular school day. Because um, we know that when 
in setting up where the painting would take place. It will it would have to be outside of the school day so that we don't we don't have as much pedestrian traffic or student traffic in those spaces. And so they'd be able to go out, help set up, prime the area, and then um, organize it so that students from their classrooms or students after school can go out and help uh, create the art that they've all generated together. Thank you. That answers my question. Okay. Vice Chair Labarski. Hi, um, I'm wondering about if you could talk a bit more about the longevity of the project. Um, I think in your proposal, you said that you thought it would last about a year. Is that right? Um, but then when I'm listening to you, it sounds like that you're thinking this would be um, available to the public out there for longer than that. So, um, yeah, can you talk some more about that? Well, realistically, we know that if we're putting something on the sidewalk here in Flagstaff, knowing that we have cold weather, ice, rain, all that fun stuff, that it might not last as long as we want it to. So we're planning to at least have it there a year, at the very least. If it could last longer than that, great. Because then as we're creating these narratives, the hope is that we get to celebrate the last 100 years in this in this work that's going to be done. If it starts to fade, we want to go back in and start adding in contributions for the next 100 years. Where do the students see themselves? How are they looking to give back to the community? What are the things that they want to celebrate in their their journey of being becoming a, a greater citizen to Flagstaff or just a citizen within that school? within the school district. Uh, we really want to make sure that we're, again, keeping that realist, understanding the realism that those sidewalks are going to have to be cleaned in the winter so that people could actually walk on them. And we know that paint will deteriorate and wash away if we're using de-icer or shovels or anything of that nature. It's going to, it's not going to last as long as we would like it to. But we want these students to know that they're creating something that will have some of that longevity and that it takes time and effort to keep that alive, to be able to keep maintaining that. And maybe that's something that they may want to in the future become the custodial stewards of that or that they create the intention within our school to maintain that. It's something that we want to leave the students to have agency for that. But we know that we would love to have it there for as long as we can get it. And a year sounds realistic to us. Have you um, thought any more about, like, uh, right, another angle on this? I mean, I think a centennial project is a really exciting thing to do. And I also think for all the time and effort that you're going to put into it and the kind of participation and buy in you are encouraging that it 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 would be important to have a, a project that's going to last longer yes. than here and so um, uh, yeah well, um, vice chair, I, mr rocks i'm just going to just interrupt for just a sec just to let um because you're very aware of this but vice chair labarski isn't um the staff is working with um, flagstaff high school on the materials and indeed we have put out you know, some expert, you know, some calls for some artists who've already, you know, worked in these types of products and in differing climates. And, you know, one of the things that's always um, a question mark with any um, concrete is that you don't actually know the chemical mix of the concrete that that you're using. Um, they, they differ uh, widely. Um, and as you know, just on the other point, I just would like to point out that, of course, philosophically, you know, there's, you know, a, a philosophy of permanence and then there's a philosophy of impermanence. And, uh, you know, you can only think of the uh, Tibetan Mandelas that are beautifully created hours after hours and they're meant to not last, you know, forever. So there's there are different philosophies out there. I just wanted to point that out. But Mr. Marks, I apologize for the interruption. That's the problem with being a uh, hybrid. I can't always see your gestures. <laughs> I'll be more elaborate. <laughs> um, Good. That 
as we're celebrating the centennial, this isn't the only project that we're trying to do at Flagstaff High School. There's a number of different activities, events um, that we're organizing so that there is that permanence. Uh, we have a Hogan, a traditional Navajo Hogan that's being built on campus. That should be done within this year's celebration. We also have a mural that we're hoping to put up on a conics box, very similar to what was at Killip, that sits next to that Hogan. That's again, reflective of the 100 years of contribution from indigenous communities. We have a courtyard that we're working with terror birds on actually to take care of, put more care into because it's been one of the courtyards at our school that's been neglected over the years. So we're putting more attention into that space that again, um, we have some sidewalk that might need to be removed. We have some sidewalk that we can still utilize. And so there's some muraling that we're looking at doing within that space. Uh, there's a Hopi house, which would be probably the first Hopi house constructed in Flagstaff in probably 150 years uh, that we have on our campus that we're trying to build around that. There's going to be a mural within one of our hallways that's celebrating the contributions of our community over that 100 years. So hopefully it is an appropriate, equitable uh, reflection of all of our students that have gone through those, the doors of that school um, over the last 100 years. And this sidewalk just gives us an opportunity. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I, I think we're I, out, we are out of time, and I just wanted yes. to honor that. Okay. But thank Sorry. you so much, Mr. Marks, and, and everybody who's here from Flag High. OK. Um, we um, were able to get a hold of um, Andrea from Terra Birds for the last presentation, and she said it was on Mr. Chambers' um, um, calendar. So she's not sure why he hasn't checked in. So we we just don't know. Um, what I would like to do is we'll decide how we're going to proceed with that at a you know when we take all of the um, um, you know have the discussion and votes on on all of the applicants. But I am going to have Eliza at least uh, present the presentation so that if we want to maybe consider a motion to defer it till November. You, We have had at least the presentation and material before you. So Liza, would you do that please? Yeah, thank you, Jana. And commissioners, I do wanna say I am not um, an expert on this application and was not expecting to present it, but I just wanted to walk through some of the materials they provided to remind commissioners about their application and then we can decide how we wanna handle this. Much as this is our first hybrid meeting, this is the first time that this has ever happened where we haven't had an applicant show up. And, and uh, the colleagues at Terra Birds believe that something came up to uh, keep the participant from being there. So um, we don't wanna you know, necessarily have too much um, judgment on why are they are here or not at this point in time. Uh, the only confusion that happened with the time is that at one point they thought they had the 435 time slot. So when they didn't show up for that, I know that that's not what happened. So we just don't know. But I'll go ahead and share the materials that they provided, which you all have in your packet. Jenna, are you seeing my screen? I'm sorry if this is making everybody dizzy. <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, because it says on my side that it should be working. We'll try that again. Okay, is it working now? Yes. Great. So this application, as the commissioners know, uh, is from Terra Birds. It's a pollinator education mural. And this is really working in, um, you know, kind of foreseeing what the future of the Thorpe Park Annex may be. And that is the area that is um, currently being planned through quite a, a few processes with the city, uh, with the community. And to, to remind you all, uh, a little bit later in this 
this presentation, there are some maps of the, the Thorpe Park Annex. So um, this is kind of hard to read. This is scanned in, but uh, this is an area that's um, maybe even Sarah, if she's still in the room, can better describe where this is. But um, <laughs> essentially, this is where the sustainability building is now. There are some various concepts being considered by the community right now. The first is back to nature. The second is family, fitness, and fun. And then the third is the concept see something for all. And so mainly I think they included this to show that they are aware that this space is under a lot of conversation. Um, they start off their application by mentioning the mayor's monarch pledge. This also came up in one of your other presentations. So as you all may know, um, this was initiated uh, several years back, the mayor's monarch pledge to create pollinator spaces in public areas throughout Flagstaff. And this is um, tied into the commitment with that pledge. Uh, and this is now Flagstaff's fourth year in support of this pledge uh, to create awareness and generate support for the pollinator protection efforts throughout the city. So this is tying into these additional efforts to create a pollinator education mural. And specifically, this would be on the existing um, sustainability building that is at the Thorpe Park Annex. So I'm going to scroll down to show you a little bit about what this may look like. This is a rendition by the application, by the artist who is applying. Um, this is the existing sustainability building that is there. And this is just an idea of what this mural could look like. It's there, um, it's going to be south of the office and they're, they're anticipating it would be done by May, 2022. And um, I did wanna mention that this building, if you've ever been there is kind of a portable building, uh, but it sounds like they felt strongly enough that it would be in place to also be part of this new anticipated civic space, whatever the Thorpe Park Annex will be in the future. So um, they are gonna also be in the future looking for future um, additional funding for the mural de depicting a sustainable Flagstaff community. So there's a drawing of what that may look like. So they speak to community involvement. It will serve as an artistic entryway into the community park space, be visually accessible to the public. And the mural they are requesting funding for will be positioned at the edge of community focused pollinator education garden. So um, that is, you know, they did, I think they did include quite a bit of text and hopefully you all had a chance to look at it. So if you look at this overview here um, of the Thorpe Park Annex, this is showing where they anticipate the pollinator education mural being. So from their drawing, I thought it was on this building, which is more kind of a portable type building, but it actually looks like it's it's on this building. And um, let's see, I wanted to see if they have a budget that we can look at together. They included some examples of Robert's work that already exist in Flagstaff, including Ponderosa High, uh, the Isabella Street Community Garden. I'm not sure where this one is, but it gives you a sense of his aesthetic. He did this um, mural at the Benito Street Community Garden. This is on their little shed that is there. And their budget. So you can see that they include artist fees, surface preparation, paints, sealant and mural protection and interpretive signage in their budget. So I wanted to just walk you all through that. You probably have noticed a lot within this that I didn't. Um, the property owner permission, I just wanna mention that they did get an emailed uh, permission from the city facilities uh, staff saying that they're okay with this plan. And they included references and um, yeah, so that is sort of a quick tour through that 
um, application. I'm going to turn it back to all of you so that we can determine how we want to handle this kind of unique situation with this application. And see if, if Jana or anybody has anything to add about this particular application. Um, I don't have anything to add, and I don't think we really can add anything. Um, I mean, obviously, all the commissioners had the exact same information to read ahead of time that you know you you succinctly presented. So thank you so much for doing that on the spot. Um, you did an incredible job. So, um, you know, picking out the highlights and, you know, the fundamentals of the application. I think we'll go ahead and save um, that one for last. I think that um, we will uh, go ahead and um, take up uh, the hey, motions. Jenna? Yes. I believe Sarah has a comment for you. Oh, Sarah, yes. Yeah, well, Eliza mentioned me at the beginning. I've been, my staff has been involved in the Thorpe Park Annex concept design creation. I just wanted to let the commission know that the uh, the schedule for determining which of those three options is the one council is moving forward is actually a work session on October 25th, and they will have a resolution before then, November 15th. So it's not far off in the future. It's in like the next four weeks in terms of when they will know like what's going on on the rest of the site. But I think all three concepts, I was just looking at the email about them, um, they all include maintaining that building where it is. Thank you, Sarah, that's really helpful. We have one more question as well, Jenna. Yes. Uh, actually, may I have permission to make a comment as a TerraBirds board member? Yes. Um, I'm absolutely shocked that Robert isn't here. I'm actually very concerned that he isn't here. Um, he is passionate about this. I know he's been working on this very hard. I don't know any of the details, so I could not support the presentation that this, you know, seeing what, what he's proposed is new to me. But um, I do want to say that um, I really think that knowing who he is, his integrity, and his incredible ability, um, he's just apparently received some sort of national award to um, that recognizes his talent. I think we're going to be wanting to point to the places where he has created art in our town. Um, I think that if the Beautification Commission can find a way to work with him on this that it would be highly merited. So that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to, you know, close any comments from the from the gallery. And I know you're all around the table together, so you're not technically sitting in the gallery, but it is now time for the commissioners to take up these different grants. And we're going to take them up one by one. And so the commissioners can no longer ask you questions and you can no longer make comments. So, um, so that that part of the presentations is closed. So I'm going to go ahead and go in the order. Um, we have our suggestion action, determine which projects the commission approves to move forward at this time. The commission may also ask for additional information on projects before deciding and that would require us to defer to the next uh, to the next meeting you can also um yeah you can give a provisional approval and say i just want to see this and um go forward or you can maybe in the case of um, the last one you can just grant an extension so um Let's go ahead and start with um, Chakalita, since that was our first presentation. And uh, first of all, uh, what comments do each of our commissioners have uh, that they want to um, exchange with each other uh, on this project? So I'm going to go ahead and um, you know go around and call on the different commissioners. 
so I'm going to start with um, Commissioner Johnson. OK, um, I well, I really like this idea, especially considering that, um, you know, it was kind of last minute put together. I think it was really well put together. Um, I think it's um, culturally considerate um, and I think it would add a lot to the community. I, I like the idea. So. Um, Commissioner Zecker. I like how you put that. Um, culturally considerate. <laughs> I I also like as I mentioned in my comments when they were presenting. I I like that aspect of it as well. I think and I, for me that shopping center needs it needs some beautification. <laughs> so I'm excited to see someone wanting to do something in that area and something that's going to be so cool and connected to to the the cultural ties of the space. So um, I think we've in the past had people like submit the final sketch and I think that would be a reasonable request, but um, I'm I'm in support of this. Uh, Commissioner McGrath. I agree, uh, support it. That wall is ugly. It was made for a mural. I think it's great that somebody <laughs> decided to try to do something and also really like that, um, you know, it's on private. I have no concerns with that, but also that the proponent is putting up a lot of money uh, themselves to match, almost match like 45%. So I think that's great. Full support. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Verrill. Uh, I love it as well. I'd also like to see a sketch before I voted for it. Okay. Um, uh, Vice Chair Labarski. I agree with what the previous commissioner said. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I love to see that location. Uh, invigorated in this way, and I also would like to see the design. So what I'm hearing is perhaps you would like to consider a motion for provisional support uh, with um, a sketch to be provided at the November BPAC meeting for final approval. Is that is Does that um, capture what I've heard you say? Yes, I agree. I'm good with that. Okay, I need somebody to make that motion, please. So moved. Okay, uh, Commissioner Verrills has made the motion to provisionally approve uh, with final approval upon um, the production of a sketch at the November meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Uh, Commissioner Zucker has seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Hearing none, all those abstained. Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you so very much. <laughs> all right. Um, next, we will take up Killip, WF Killip Elementary School. Um, I'm going to open it up for discussion and let's uh, let's pick on uh, Commissioner McGrath first. Uh, not a lot of comments on this one. It makes total sense. It's a great location. I think it's well thought out uh, and I don't have any any other comments. Okay, Commissioner Verrill. I love it. Uh, Vice Chair Lebarski. I agree. I think it's great. I, I love the whole oh, the whole uh, vision of the of the project. So I would vote to support it. Okay, Commissioner Johnson. I agree with everything that's been said. I think that it's well thought out. I think it's a great way to support the community, and I also would vote to support it or to uh, pass it. Okay, and Commissioner Zecker. I also agree. It feels like um, this is really well. <laughs> I have nothing to add to that other than it's very, it just seems like it's been very well planned out. Everything's been accounted for, even the bees. So, <laughs> <I really agree. laughs> um, all right. So, I am hearing, uh, a, 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 can I hear a motion to approve 
the beautification and ag action grant as presented uh, by WF McKellop Elementary School. I'll make that motion. All right, uh, Commissioner Johnson has made the motion. May I hear a second? Second. Is that Commissioner McGrath? Yes. Okay, we have a second from Commissioner McGrath. Is there uh, any further discussion? Hearing none and seeing no hands, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Hearing none, all those abstain say abstain. Hearing none, the motion passes. Thank you so very much. Very excited about this project um, and all, all the projects actually, but the um, let's go on to Flagstaff High School. Um, I would like to open this up for discussion um, and I'm going to um, uh, start with uh, Commissioner Zecker. I knew you were going to pick me. Uh, <laughs> I'm still I'm still pondering this one. We got cut off too early. Didn't get to ask all of our questions. Um, I know. I know. Uh, you know, I at the end of the day, I love the stu student participation. I love participatory art. It doesn't bother me that it's a temporary piece. Um, I'm just going to say my question <laughs> that no one can answer, but my was my concern was like being that I work with students. I know sometimes we have these really good ideas, but getting students to actually do the work is another thing. So I just want to I just hope that the whole project actually gets completed or there's a backup plan for that. That's my only concern right now. Uh, Commissioner McGrath. Uh, I think this one is fantastic. I love the idea of it being 100 years of history, but it is not going to be around that long. There's something kind of cool about that. Uh, and there are other ways to reflect the long term history of it. Also, really, um, you know, I had a question. I'm not asking you now, but I had a question about the stipend for staff that were already getting paid. But I uh, really like that they acknowledging that they're going to be spending time outside of their regular I'm sure teachers do that all of the time, but the fact that we can actually compensate them a little bit for doing this extracurricular stuff, I think is fantastic. So I'm glad that's in there. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Barrell. I know we can't ask the applicant this question, but we can ask each other, right? Because <laughs> the question I didn't get to ask was, was after the snow and ice deteriorates and it looks unattractive, under normal circumstances, is there a plan for cleaning it up? Does anyone on the commission or Janet, do you have a sense of, of, of what a, a normal approach to that might be? The um, school will be responsible for the mural. There won't there won't be any responsibility from the commission or further monies uh, from us. That I can just state as a matter of policy. I can't state whether the school has actually implemented a plan for this. Um, we have been, it, like I said earlier, in a lot of discussion about um, the materials, or, and, and it's mostly the coatings, um, the coatings that may uh, actually provide some some protection. Um, and there's, you know, some discussion of some different, you know, materials to try to do the, you know, best best that we can for the lo longest longevity that we can get. But it is, um, and it is something that the principal asked staff about whose responsibility it would be for the upkeep. And I'm, you know, so they are actively thinking about how they're going to do it. That's all I can answer at this point. And my, my as, as, as wonderful as I think the project is, I have, I, I have very mixed feelings about this much money on something that's temporary. And um, uh, Eliza, I know you have your hand up because you may have had some further conversations since you've been spearheading this project that may be able to answer Commissioner Verrill's uh, questions. So please go ahead. Yeah, and just to be clear, I haven't spearheaded this project, just in just the uh, con uh, contact with all of the applicants to set up the presentations. 
Um, but I did want to mention that a change we made when we revamped the Beautification in Action grants is we included language specifically to allow for temporary projects. Recognizing that temporary projects can be very inclusive and very powerful as staff. We recognize that this is a shift for the commission. The guidelines um, in the past have focused on longevity and it was very intentional that we included that and the commission at that time approved those changes. So while I, I understand that you may have a desire for longevity and it's fair for you to consider that in funding, I do want to mention that that was a very intentional change that was approved by BPAC at that time. Don't get me wrong, I specialize in temporary art, so I, 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 I get the power of it. Um, uh, Commissioner uh, Johnson. Yeah, um, I think that it's a great idea. Um, I guess I personally would like to hear a little bit more specifics on um, exactly what events they're going to be putting on there, what kind of flowers they're going to be putting on there. I know you already mentioned that they're they're having a discussion about the upkeep, but we don't have a clear answer on that yet either. Um, I love the idea and I think it's a great idea to um, you know support the schools, support the staff that would be doing it. I love that it's student led. Um, but I guess I would personally, I would like a little bit more specificity, um, in the, in the proposal. Okay. Um, I, I don't think that will be a problem. I just do want to make it clear though, that they're not applying for money for the events. Um, so that, you know, the flat, the flowers were part of the budget, but the events, um, were not as far as I, I, I recall. Um, Commissioner Zecker, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to just a question on our logistics. Then it sounds like it sounds like we're all like, you know, interested in this project, but we have some questions and some clarifying pieces. So can we can we like ask for clar clarity on that before we approve? Is that a okay, thing I'm, we can I'll, do? I'll, yeah, I will make a couple of suggestions here after everyone's made their comments and you guys can decide what kind of motion that you would like to make. Um, Vice Chair Labarsky, I don't believe I've you've been called on yet. Right, thank you. Well, I'm I think I'm with everyone else or most everyone else on this that I I'm still pretty unclear about just how this is going to shape up and um, and I do have, for example, I, I really don't understand how the flowers are integrated into the project, um, but that's a minor question, but it's part of the kind of um, the vagueness still of the project. Um, and I do think that I am, um, I am glad, I felt better to hear that there were other projects that were gonna be part of the um, commemoration, more lasting projects, but I, I still think there needs to be some discussion or I would feel better about funding the project if I understood how the project then was going to fade away. That what, what is it gonna look like to the public if it's not maintained? Um, so I, I, I would like that question answered. But overall, I just feel like uh, the project right now is, I'm just not clear on what this thing is gonna look like. So I'd like more clarity. Um, I'm going to ask you a question, Vice Chair Labarsky. Um, you know, projects that involve community are often process projects versus, you know, because when groups of people work on something, unless somebody draws an outline for them and asks them to paint, you know, by number, um, you don't know exactly what it, it looks like. And there's, um, so are, are you, I, on one hand, do I hear the concerns about the maintenance and 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 getting more information on that, but um, I guess I just guess I want you to consider um, whether or not a community process project has a role with our BIA grants because those preclude you knowing exactly what they're going to look like. I, mean, I I'm sorry if I used the word exact. Um, because I'm not asking for exactly knowing what the plan is, what the project is going to look like. I, I just simply don't understand, like, how how 
large is this project? How many murals are being produced? And um, again, I have a question about the, the technique. I, I mean, I'm thinking about the parking spaces at the high school that get decorated by the students. And that's, that's a lot of fun. Um, and, um, but I just, um, so I, I'm thinking that if that's, that's the kind of paint that's being used, then it will have some, it will be lasting for a while. Um, but, but really, I, I just, I'm not envisioning what the project is. Um, like, what's the area that's being covered by the project? I believe so, it's the sidewalk in front. And I'm sorry, they can't answer the, the question. And I, I don't have the application in front of me. Did, was it not mentioned in the application at all? It is. In fact, this is Eliza jumping in just because I, I had those up and read through them again today. There is a map in your packet that shows a proposed um, highlighted area of the sidewalk that they're proposing. Uh, we don't know. I mean, one thing I think we we may or may not know is if that will shift with the process, but that they that was presented as part of their packet. All right. Um, Commissioner Zecker helped us as page 14 of your packet. I don't know how to suggest this, so help me out if you would, Janet. I mean, our applicant sitting right here, and we have these weird procedures that I'm just learning myself that's preventing them from asking questions we that we have, and, and I'm not second guessing those procedures, but is there a way that we can reconsider this uh, next month or I I'm getting the sense that we're all in spirit supportive, but we still have questions um, and I'd like to figure out a way to to encourage this project and go forward, but get our questions answered at the same time. OK, so we have we have three options. We you, you can just approve, you know, vote to approve straight out. You can evade to prove provisionally with a request for visuals like we did with Chocolita, or you can vote to postpone your consideration for one month and ask for the information that you're seeking. I'd be in favor of postponing it a month and getting answers to some of those questions. I agree. I would as well. Okay, do I hear a motion then? So I, I okay. move to postpone. Okay. okay, Vice Chair Labarski made the motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay, and do I hear any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, all those against say nay. Nay. So you're voting against that motion to postpone? Yes, because okay. I, would I would approve it outright. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't see who was speaking, I, I apologize, uh, Commissioner McGrath. I thought it was Commissioner Verrill, and I, that's that's why I questioned. Okay. Um, and then- I can um, vote against my own motion. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, sorry, the voice came from the same point in the room on the video. Um, all those uh, in favor of abstaining? Okay, hearing none. Uh, the motion to uh, postpone for further information uh, has passed. Um, I do apologize for the procedure. It is in fairness that every single applicant got the same exact time. That's why if we opened it up for further questions, but this is a bit more of a complicated uh, project, but um, uh, I, we will work with um, the staff uh, to get as many of these questions answered for you um, for November. So thank you very much for your uh, consideration. Um, and now we have um, uh, the pollinator education mural uh, by Tara Birds. Um, so we can um, also make a motion to postpone or we can, um, you know, make a motion on the application um, without any further information. I'd like to see the application again on March 15th. Um, is there any other um, discussion? Um, I, I'll go around the room. Um, uh, Commissioner Johnson? 
Um, yeah, I guess I'd like to see it from um, Tara Birds or the artist. So I would um, prefer to postpone. Okay, uh, Vice Chair Labarski. Well, this is when I would actually be in favor of approving um, with the condition of seeing the design. Okay, and why, why, you know, this is the discussion part. So why don't you all elaborate just a little bit on why? And, well, just as we'd like to see the design on the other projects before we, um, before we completely um, approved. I mean, how do how do we word those other ones? I'm in favor of the project, but I'd like to see the design before it goes um, goes forward. Okay, yeah. right. We can do a provisional approval with just seeing the design, or we can postpone, or we can take a vote straight yeah. out today. Well, it sounds like you want the provisional approval. Okay, yeah. Commissioner Zucker. Yeah, I, I have the like the convenience of having the proposals right in front of me. I've been able to look through them, and this one seems. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. So. I'm kind of uh, in agreement with Vice Chair um, Barsky on this. Like, I would be comfortable with a provisional approval, um, with you know, giving them a chance to present the the sketch next month. Okay. Um, and uh, Commissioner McGrath, I would postpone and have them present it next month. All right. And Commissioner Verrill. Uh, I postpone and have them presented, whether it's next month or in March, or um, yeah, whatever. whatever, whatever timing is, is makes the most sense to us. Okay. But I think they should be here. Okay, my informal polling tells me that that is the motion that would be most likely to prevail. <laughs> Um, but um, any commissioner can make either motion. Uh, so um, do I hear a motion? Well, before we do, can I just make a a plea for like we don't know what the situation is for them not being here today. So I would I would prefer to give them some forgiveness and give them the opportunity to, to meet again next month rather than putting it off six months. Okay. No, 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 no. Not oh, I see. Your motion was to put it off six months. No, my my. I, I'm sorry. I understood it to. Um, um, put it off until November 14th, and maybe well, I was, just misheard you. Uh, there was yeah, some talk I, of March and some talk of November, so I would be in favor. Of, if we're going to postpone, I would prefer to do it in November. Well, thank you for clarifying that because uh, I didn't hear that distinction, Commissioner Zecker. Um, I appreciate it very much. Um, so for those who um, would consider a motion to postpone, um, would November or do you want to make basically if you're there's no postponing till March 15th they would have to just simply reapply at that point I move we postpone until November's meeting I second uh, the motion I third the motion <laughs> <laughs> okay um is there any further discussion I heard a motion and a second, and uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> all those opposed say nay. All those who abstain say abstain. Okay, the motion to postpone to November and here a full presentation has passed. All right, thank you very much. We're gonna move on to the next action item which is about our BPAC minute format. Okay. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Illuminating. <laughs> it, it is for me too. <laughs> I chair a commission that runs on open meeting law too. So. But we, I, we do a roll call vote. Be glad that you don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. You yes. guys be safe. Thank you. Take care. See you later. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yourself and Margaret's on, but I'm sure. Take those. Believe me, they're, they're going to take it. Maybe some. Okay. 
Um, I know we haven't had the, uh, everybody stay, so uh, thank you for everybody though for running so smoothly and being so honest though still with your comments. Um, I think that's uh, you know really uh, you know re really appreciated. So our next item though is about the BPAC minutes, and um, as you know, we do rather detailed minutes um, than some commissions. And they, they do vary. Some do as detailed as we do, and some do what we, I would call uh, an action, um, pretty much uh, action only, just the first, the second, and the, um, you know, what, what the vote uh, out, outcome was. Um, and pretty much uh, I consulted with uh, Stacy Salzberg about how much um, is legally required. And those action you know, are legally acquired and but you can go to a much more succinct summary where maybe only direction is captured in a few bullet points. Um, but it's not, you know, Commissioner Varel said this and and Commissioner, uh, you know, Zucker said this and the kind of level of detail. We do records as long as these are hybrid, we are recording the meetings and we can post them on our website so that they are easily accessed. So if anybody wants to go and hear the detail, that is possible. Um, I, you know, some people find it very helpful to go back through the minutes and, you know, just kind of read, you know, read it more detailed um, and not listen to the, the recording. And um, some people would rather just hear the full thing on the recording if they really wanted to go back and, and look at the minutes for some, some information. So I, I wanted to bring it up because the minutes do consume time. And I know there are a lot for you um, to edit. I know we keep uh, Chair Cruz very busy sometimes with that. Um, so I just thought, you know, enough of the time consumption has come up that I thought I would just ask you guys um, how you felt about how we do our minutes and what direction you'd like to go with them. We can keep them just the same. It's not an issue. It's not an issue. We just, I just thought I would ask. Uh, Commissioner Zecker. What is your preference, Jana? Shorten them? I'm a first, uh, you know, I do find um, it helpful to, um, you know, there's many times I have to go back to the minutes to, you know, figure things out, but I am happy to listen, listen to the recording. As long as I know, you know, what, um, um, what month it was in, I'm happy to listen to the recording. In fact, even if I read the detailed minutes, it, you know, uh, unless I was just like, which commissioner said that? You know, <laughs> um, I'm probably going to go back and listen to the whole thing. Okay. Well, for me, I think the shorter, the better. <laughs> I need a, an overview snapshot of what's going on. I don't need like very detailed scripts of who said what. That that would be my opinion on it. Vice Chair Labarsky. Yeah. I um. I don't have a strong opinion, <laughs> but I just suggest that um, because so many of our items are for discussion and they're not put to a vote, that somehow um, those the highlights or the, con the, con the consensus that we reach around a discussion item, that that, that get recorded. Um, I just don't want to lose the richness um, the fact that we do have these rich discussions. Um, so I, I, I would like, I mean, a compressed form of that is fine, but somehow to, um, you know, summarize what it is that we concluded in our discussion, even if we didn't take a vote. Um, and I, 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 I can, we do have a lot of um, discussion items, as you say, Vice Chair Labarsky. I wonder if we could get better in our discussions at summarizing ourselves what the conclusion is and the consensus is, and um, not necessarily, you know, leaving it to, um, you know, uh, just staff interpretation. Um, if we go this way, you know, you know, maybe 
the end of the discussion is what is the direction from the discussion and and get at least a consensus in the room to uh, you know aver to it right or the chair it, might say at the end of the discussion it sounds like this is uh right let, let me make sure that i'm summarizing this correctly um right but there, that there's some way that we um just get that in the record yeah right right so that it's not you know you know staff interpretation of what these you know summation is i i, I want to kind of avoid that if we go for it uh you know a more bullet point summation you know approach um like i said this is just something it it it, it came up um i just know that some people say that it's a lot to edit the minutes and i just wanted to make sure that that people were valuing them um, and everyone say hello to my cat. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I just wanted to make sure that people were valuing them. So that's why I put it on, uh, you know, this discussion. So, um, Commissioner Verrill? I think I agree with Sandra. And, and, just to be sure, what are you agreeing with? I'm agreeing that the minutes can be much shorter, but as long as the salient points get there, uh, I think that's okay. Okay, on Commissioner McGrath? Shorter is better. <laughs> and um, and then uh, Commissioner Johnson? Um, I think especially because they are being, these meetings are being recorded, that it, you know, it seems like shorter is better to me as well just to save on that labor okay so um do i hear a motion to uh in regards to the minutes format is that really do we really need a motion on this um, or is um something we can try out and see how how it goes and then well, you yeah. can make that part of the motion like let's try three months of summary a summary but salient points minutes. I don't really think we need a motion on this personally. I, it sounds like we have a general consensus that sure, go ahead and um, just trim them down. Uh, Vice Chair Laborski, it is an action item, so it does require a vote. Oh, okay. I'll make a motion to shorten the BPAC minutes as long as the salient details of our discussions are captured and summarized by the chair and, and not put upon the staff. I'll second. Okay, um, I heard a motion uh, from Commissioner Zucker on a second for Commissioner Johnson. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against say nay. Hearing none, all those uh, abstain say abstain. Hearing none, the motion passes. Okay, so um, if you would stop sharing, we will go to the last discussion item. And in some ways, this is a, a, um, a, Preliminary in, in some regards to um, sorry to the um, retreat, but it is something that I am planning on doing every quarter. You know, uh, out of last year's retreat, one of the gifts that we got is an actual work plan, and I went over the work plan um, at the beginning of the fiscal year, which was uh, the first meeting in July. And now the first quarter has ended. So I do want to give you quarterly reports, but this it will segue into the retreat because we have many, you know, we have projects carrying over um, into the next fiscal year. So um, since I presented this last to you, um, I did add a project down at the bottom. You'll see it in red, recruitment and onboarding of new staff. Um, this is taking almost 
entirely a project time of my time available. So I, I wanted to, you know, we want to make the work plan very real to you. Um, uh, I have a second uh, recruitment to go out. Um, you know, I haven't yet started onboarding, um, you know, interviews. We want to be um, do a thorough and wonderful job as, so that we can have uh, the wonderful staff that we've, you know, had before. Um, so that's been added. I also, I just want you from this kind of summary to look at, there's about eight projects that are going to complete this year. And then there's 14 that are going to go over and be part of fiscal year 24, which is what we're planning for as part of the budget retreat. So just kind of want to make you you know, just kind of let that sink in a little bit. We have kind of a project, ideal project load of 15 projects for three people, and we have 14 carrying over. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of set that stage a little bit. Uh, as we consider new projects, it is very unlikely that any will be able to start in fiscal year 24. So, um, project descriptions. Um, I just want to go through and just give you any updates. You know, the Aspirin Avenue you know, <sighs> library, ever since we got the bid, has been going on schedule. Um, I'm sure you've all been seeing the construction. We're still on our estimated data completion of December 2022. I was out expecting the uh, book sculptures. They were all made. Um, you know, we uh, had to tag some burrs, some sharp edges still to be removed. They have not been yet sent to the powder coater. We did have one faux pas by the fabricator. It won't delay the project, but the ones that are hooked together um, near the, um, and I don't know if I can do this, uh, near the plaza that are linked together, um, basically they put two in the wrong order. He went G4, G6, G5. <laughs> and uh, although he nicely asked if, didn't it look just as good that way? Um, we are having to take uh, those apart and, 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 and redo them. However, it will not delay the project at all. So um, that's my update on that one. Beautification and action grants. Well, you know where those are. This is, you know, we are on track. Um, we had four excellent proposals, I think, tonight, and um, I'm sure that all of them will probably, you know, my prediction, and it's just a prediction for whatever it's worth, um, you know, we'll be able to, uh, you know, go forward. And we actually do have a little bit more money um, um, this year. Uh, somebody's waiting to get in. I'm not sure. Craig, okay. did you let... You, you got it? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, you know, we actually have a little carryover from last year. So we have about 46000 actually, um, you know, in, in this year to spend on uh, beautification and action grants. A project that is very delayed in getting started um, is uh, the bicycle and pedestrian niche on Aspen. This has been because both of our short staffing, but short staffing at procurement. This will be a formal procurement. It requires uh, a procurement person to oversee the selection and uh, they've been backed up. But I have just talked with Emily Markle and she has said that we will finish our uh, solicitation in mid-November. We will put it out on the street um, probably around December, you know, mid-December, and it will be open until mid-January. So we will initiate it. Um, it's it's in the queue, finally, with procurement, but that means that it probably won't be complete until maybe August, September, October. Um, so I was hoping that we were going to finish this one up in fiscal year 23, but it is going over to fiscal year 24. The airport will is on track to finish up um, in December, not October. <laughs> um, I just put the procurement out to install the fence. The fabricator is putting the fence together. Um, it is in 
it is in progress. Progress is happening. I'm hoping I will have pictures, for, some pictures for you soon. Yeah, the metal is being cut. The pieces are being put together. Um, and I am hiring the installer for the panels. Um, that uh, solicitation closes on October 25th. We should have a installer selected and hopefully under contract by mid-November. Um, Right now, we think the fence will arrive around probably the week after Thanksgiving, and then it'll probably take about a week to install it. So that's where we are with that. Um, just wanted you to know that the you know the grants committee, the operating grants are done, but now the project grants they had a deadline of September thirtieth. Myself and I believe um, Commissioner Zecker, are you still on the the committee? Yes, I am. Sorry, I was handling my. Yes, thoughts. yes. We we have many we have many meetings and time consumption, right? We have our we have our packets. We're reading <laughs> avidly. Yes, I we have, have a lot I, to review. I have not started mine, but it is a big time consumer. Um, the other thing that's going on is the of course the um, creative uh, festival arts and ideas art X um, that is you know having um, monthly meetings. Um, they are in process of hiring a festival director. I know Commissioner Verrill is going to sit in on some of those uh, interviews. I'm going to only probably sit in on the final interviews because I just don't have the staff time to um, sit through. Uh, they're having a, a couple stages, phone interviews, then first in-person interviews, and then final in-person interviews. Um, so I will hope to be uh, participating in the uh, final. I have been attending the monthly meetings. I spoke of uh, uh, the Arizona Arts Commission Executive Director at the very beginning of this meeting, and it was that made that a very interesting meeting. The Downtown Connection Center. Hey, you're going to be seeing more of this in person at the November um, uh, Commission meeting. So I'm not going to say too much. The art glass that you already approved um, is definitely working out the details with the um, architect. The building no longer looks like this picture and the art um, glass is adjusted, but you will see that update. Um, like I said, it's already been approved, but I am going to show you all the progress that's been made at the November meeting, and we're going to be looking for a council date for that contract to um, fabricate um, uh, this. So it is a, um, you know, fabrication is going to be going on, and the final work with the uh, architect will be going on all the way through 23, and installation probably will not, the building probably won't be finished until um, 24. Uh, the Grove location, um, if you recall, you gave a provisional approval um, with the direction to soften um, the sculpture. And the artist's team has actually been working on a lot of, of, of details and slight changes, and I will be bringing that back to you for a full approval at the November meeting. Um, we have still had a lot of difficulty in locating this project um, because of the Rio and the changes to the building, which um, shrunk up plazas. Um, that will all be part of the November meeting. Um, this has been just a bear, a bear of a project because of all the different parties involved. Um, but the design team is actively working on a phased location for the sculpture. And again, more uh, in November, but this is, uh, you know, these are two separate, you know, projects that are going on for 23 and both will be carrying on to fiscal year 24. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about this, you know, right of way and the land, the flowers kind of together. Um, the, we meet every other week for the expanded use of right away and a lot of different topics come up and the the um tree wells have been part of that um just uh you know the sidewalk improvements near dark skies being finalized trees are going to be removed um and then 
as part of that, and that's going to be very painful for the property owner. Uh, but the disruption to the sidewalk is um, the roots are 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 mangling it. So it's um, so we're we contribute to a lot of different issues there. The flowers and enhanced landscaping. Um, we are looking at all the issues that have been happening in Aspen Alley. We are looking at replacing the wine barrels in the Aspen Alley with smaller metal planters because of all the damage and uh, that has happened this year with the wine barrels. The uh, I know the property owners did not like the these large uh, planters because it seemed like it was saying don't go down here, and so we put the wine barrels to be more you know, that don't have that kind of blockading effect. So we're looking at smaller mental planners or we're looking at a different kind of configuration of the mental platter so they don't, you know, say, don't go down here because the businesses want them to go down here, but that can hold up to some of the um, abuse better than the wine barrels were able to. Um, that's a, you know, yearly and reoccurring. And as you know, we've gone into Sunnyside, um, you know, this year. So we will always be probably adding onto that project in, in different ways. Um, the 4th Street and Lockett Roundabout, as we discussed um, in the last couple of months, um, the property acquisition issues, that project is being removed from the 2023 work plan. And we talked about replacing it with the Schweitzer Canyon Roundabout. Um, once full staffing, we can contemplate that project starting in the spring. The indigenous representation at Sawmill. Uh, we had a wonderful uh, community meeting um, out at the uh, at the Sawmill Multicultural Art and Nature Park, and that's no longer its name. It is named after a wonderful esteemed member of the community. I just don't have the name in front of me, but we have started that work group thinking about what we how we want to scope this project. Um, my time has kept us from meeting again um, this month, but I'm hoping to get back to that in November. Still think that we will uh, get that final call, that call to artists finalized um, maybe in January and uh, hopefully maybe install next fall. It's, you know, it's a little up in the air. It really is dependent on staffing time. And, and, and of course, this is the uh, blank pads that we have to fill with art. Um, there's not too much to say about the holiday, holiday decorations. They continue to go pretty smoothly. The Little Phone Library, um, we still anticipate um, it finishing this year, but we are having some delay in the project. Um, the glass has not yet arrived. The bookshelf supplies have been delayed. And there was a little confusion about the backside, uh, whether it was supposed to be a bulletin board or a mural. And we're having a meeting to clear that up. Um, but the um, the contract expired on uh, October 23rd. So we have asked for an extension um, and maybe it will be in by Christmas, um, but there's a possibility it may go over into the spring. A uh, Lone Tree, you're also going to see an update on Lone Tree. Um, the design team is at 60%. And so the artist is meeting with their focus group uh, this Wednesday and the Lone Tree, um, some preliminary concepts will be shown to you at the November uh, BPAC meeting. You can see November is, I mean, is now very busy. Um, and you know that this is a multi-year project. It will go to sleep for a while. It'll have active years. And then when they do all the construction to lower the railroad, you know, we'll be asleep for a while. Um, so it'll be active, asleep, active, asleep. It'll have a, a lot of different phases. Um, the public art map update desperately needs to be done. Um, we um, have done, Eliza and both of her VISTA interns have done so much work on it. We really need to get some photography done to complete it. Um, I'm hoping to work with Discover Flag staff um, in the spring of 2023, but it, it you know isn't going to finish like we hoped in this fiscal year. Um, the Route 66 historical trail, um, the th three monuments um, have been bid 
the bid has been accepted, it's been budgeted, and uh, a notice to proceed has been given. So there's not, um, that's pretty much going to be, you know, led by capital projects. So it won't require um, a lot of staff time, very, very minimal. Um, same thing with Fanning Landscape, um, that is out to bid. And this is on Route 66 near Fanning. And there's, uh, you know, this is just a, basically a landscaping project. Um, you know, it is kind of more self-directed uh, through capital projects. Um, they're overseeing a lot of the details, but that is out to bid now. And hopefully we will um, have a vendor. Uh, the South Side City Park, um, the public art component. Um, we don't have a call to artists yet. Mark Revis is still working out the configuration of the park with the Murdoch Center. And even though the park is separate from the Murdoch Center, why he has to work out is because there were some grants given for some pollinator plants and and obviously for the, you know, the, you know, we have the chessboard and and some things had to be moved. And so um that's why he's still working on that configuration. And we have not yet turned to the call for the public art component um, for the city park. So I'm not sure when that's going to happen. It's completely dependent on Mark Revis's um, schedule. Um, and the Southside Community Garden, um, it is going to be finished very soon. Uh, since Eliza has been intimately involved with that, is she still here? Would you like to say when we're going to be completing? Um, hi, Jana and all. I think that, you know, Sonia London Hall, the selected artist, believes that she'll be completing it this month, if all goes as planned. She installed an entry sign that also serves as a bike rack. And I think the picture of that was in Jana's weekly report. So if you haven't seen that yet, keep an eye out or, or look at that email. Uh, it's quite a, quite a lovely piece that was done by local um, metal artisans. Artisan Metalworks is the name of the company. And one of their artists created it. And then she's doing some entry elements that sort of look, um, they're kind of reminiscent of arches, but they're more in the shape of lampposts at this point in time. She's sort of evolved her design. Uh, there's been new uh, wood chips added to the site by uh, Terra Birds and the sustainability within the city. And the artist is also adding decorative gravel to make that space more usable and welcoming. And she'll be putting in some ben benches as well. I got an email from her today that she feels that it's almost complete, but uh, we'll just see if, you know, if anything else comes up and we'll happily share projects or uh, photos with you when it's complete. Yes, but we, you know, um, we can say November is still fall and uh, it's not, it not, it's not past December 21st. So that is one project that looks like it's going to be completed uh, in the time uh, allotted. Yay. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eliza. Um, the traffic signal cabinets, you know, really um, wanted to uh, go as soon as, um, you know, we have uh, the new um, project administrator on board. This is probably the first project I'm going to give that person. Um, we have five locations um, already approved. Um, and so I hope to get the call out sometime in the spring um, or summer of 2023 and installed in the fall of 2023. But it, you know, um, it's possible. We had delays last time because of design issues between the vendor and the artist that, you know, we could have delay again. I will tell you that I get requests all the time for more utility boxes. Um, upper management has requested that I look at um, some cabinets at Butler and Lone Tree. Um, the you know many requests for electric boxes come in. They're not traffic signal cabinets, so we have no permission at this time. Um, just to know it's very popular. Uh, this is our our you know supposed to be our final rendition. Um, but I will tell you that there's probably you know pressure on to do another round in the future. So that concludes my report and did you have any questions about specific projects or any discussion 
I had a question on the uh, the little phone booth libraries. Do we know how often those are used? I you're gonna have to you what what do you mean? How many people take things in and out of yeah. the library? Yeah. What? Yes, that's my question. Oh. Um, I, you know, this is going to be by the visitor center and is going to have visitor center materials. So I imagine, it, you know, uh, perhaps what is used by, you know, the little ones that are in neighborhoods isn't um, a correct measure. But no, I, I don't have that data. Eliza, did you have anything that you wanted to add to that? Because I know you've been more intimately involved with this project. No, I don't. Um, other than, as I understand it, there will also be books in there, not just visitor center materials. There'll be both. Um, and there was quite a bit of discussion about this when it became when it came before BPAC in terms of overall as a concept. And uh, so you know, if you if you want us to share any of that history, I'd be happy to do that at another time with you, Chris. And um, actually, speaking of minutes, I can pull up those minutes from those discussions and share them with you if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> but we we did we surveyed the community on support for this. We surveyed the community on desired location, and it was an overwhelmingly supportive and fairly strong for the visitor center. Other sites that we had out there were the Hal Jensen Youth Center, and um, I don't remember the other one now, maybe someone on the commission does, uh, but this one came out as the lead, And um, but we did not look into statistics on how much these are used. I, I just, they look beautiful, they're really cute, and I see them with cobwebs on them. Any other? Uh... Questions or comments on the work plan? Commissioner Johnson. Oh, uh, it's not a, a question or comment on the work plan, but I just wanted to mention I have one of the um, little phone booth libraries in my neighborhood and it is like never empty. There are always people going in and out. So I think it just depends where you are. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, then let's bring this, um, um, you know, meeting to an end. Um, thank you for listening to all those updates. Uh, like I said, we will do that on quarters. Um, uh, we're go going to move on to two from items. I have no two from items. I know Chair Cruz has no uh, two from items. I don't know, is Vice Mayor Sweet still with us? It does Probably. appear. Probably not, so she doesn't have any two from items. Are there any other two from items from the commission? Hearing none, I'm gonna go forward to the next item on the agenda, um, which is requests for future agenda items. Is there, are there any requests for future agenda items? Hearing none at this time, we're going to go ahead and go forward to time and date for upcoming meetings. We have the retreat at 9 a.m. on Friday, October 28th at the Coconino Center for the Arts. Look forward to seeing you there. We're going to have some tours of the Center for the Arts and of the art exhibit as part of the day. So it won't be all budget work um, and, and, and project work. So uh, I look forward to seeing everybody. Um, the BPAC, next BPAC meeting is, um, it's a hybrid meeting, November 14th at 4 p.m. And with that, we are adjourned. See you all next time. All right, thank you. See you. Thanks all. Nice Bye. to see you again. <laughs>